Hello and welcome to the Play Attention audio tutorial on using the Reports tab. Um, you'll notice uh, we are logged in as a coach currently. Um, of course that's necessary because the Reports feature is one of the selections under Coach only. You know, obviously we could not get to this uh, from a student. But whenever you log in as coach, uh, the default screen is Dashboard. So we're just going to come up here to the top and click on Reports. And you'll see right here, you can select uh, a student. I'm going to select, uh, let's go with 002 right here. And you'll notice that by default, this view data for all sessions selection is, is checked. And that's because generally when we're looking at a report, we want to see everything. We want to see everything the student has done from day one. That being said, you do have the option to deactivate that, which will give you access to a graph and you could select a specific date range. If I wanted to select from let's say August 12th to uh, September 13th and just look at data from sessions played during that date range, I could certainly do that. I could select that date range and hit show report and it would show me just that. That being said again, you know, since we're, we're usually trying to get a holistic picture of progress made by a student, the most common use of this is to make sure view data for all sessions is selected. So we're going to go ahead and do that and let's click show report. And now you can see an actual report for this student. And uh, some of the more important things I wanted to point out, obviously, total time played. That's the amount of time a student has accumulated within the games. Uh, now that's that that is actual game time as opposed to linear time, you know, where a session might, you know, they're playing five games with about 25, 30 minutes of play time, for example, but the whole session might have lasted 45 minutes when you take into consideration putting the equipment on and taking breaks and things like that. So this is the total amount of time a student has put put in while actually in games. So that's that's an important feature. Uh, number of points they've earned, number of games they've played, number of sessions they've done, all of those are pretty self-explanatory. But I wanted to point out the little buttons you have here. Uh, request progress review would allow you to send this student's data file to us to play attention. And we would go ahead and take a look at it and generate a report letting you know what we're seeing and making suggestions moving forward. Email circle success would allow you to report to email the report we're generating right now to a student's circle of success. Um, export PDF and export CSV. Um, these these two features are not used very often. Um, the, as you're probably already aware, a, a, a person's data is automatically uploaded to our uh, cloud server. So usually exporting data is not necessary, but if let's say you purchased a second play attention system and you had a new site ID and you wanted to, to export data from your old site ID and import it into a new one, that this would allow you to do that. That's basically exporting your data as a separate file somewhere on your computer and you could email that to another computer as a as an email attachment or put it on a flash drive or what have you and transfer it. Um, so if you're doing if you're exporting to import into another play attention this is the one you would choose PDF. If you were exporting data just so you could import it into say an Excel spreadsheet so that you could see the data outside of the play attention software itself that's when you'd use the export CSV. Again, as you can imagine, these two features are not used very often. So let's get into the nitty gritty though. If we scroll down a little bit, we see we've got behavioral progress and that's this graph right here. And this is exactly what you probably think it is. It's a graph of the number of times a student uh, exhibited particular self-distracting or self-stimulating behaviors like fidgeting, calling out, impulsivity. Remember, these are recorded by the coach on the white laminated chart and manually put into the system after each game. But you can see this is graphing this the number of times the student did a particular behavior, in this case off task. This is the one it's set to in this particular example. And if you take your mouse cursor and scroll, scroll over each data point here, you can see the number of times that student did that behavior that day. You see the date at the bottom, in this case, February 9th, 2017. And on that day, our fictional student 007 uh, was off task 53 times. And of course, that's true of every data point. You can kind of go through and see. And of course, what we're wanting to use this for is looking over time, are the, the frequency of these self-distracting behaviors getting less and less and less, which is what we want to see. And that's certainly the case in this graph. Now, you do have the ability to compare up to two. Uh, so we've got off task uh, selected. If we were going to select another one, let's see if I can find one with some data in it. 
yeah, there's one uh, calls out. So right here, we've got the blue line, which represents off task. We've got the orange line, with, which represents calls out, and you can kind of compare the two. And what we usually do see is that as the frequency of one self-distracting or self-stimulating behavior decreases, they all tend to decrease just because of a gradual increase in, in self-awareness and self-control. But that's uh, where the orange, uh, the orange is, as that's called out, and the uh, blue is off task. So very straightforward, very user friendly, but just a great, great way to see is that student getting better at controlling their behaviors over time. All right, so if we go down a little bit further, we've got all of the games listed that this student has ever played. And uh, the first one in the list is selected by default, obviously. And uh, we're just going to, and uh, once again, we see the blue line. And let's go down so we can see the graph of attention stamina. And you'll see we're on beginner bronze. That's the bronze medal. Uh, discriminatory processing. This student is on silver intermediate. On social skills, this student is on uh, gold advanced. Um, and you can see it's different for each game depending on how fast this student is progressing in each cognitive skill. But the point is, uh, attention stamina is selected by default. And if we go down, we can see actual graphs of each time they played attention stamina listed right here by statistical category. Uh, the most important statistic, hands down, is the attention percentage. And that's the amount of time, the percentage of the time that that student was paying attention to their, their absolute best. And you can see, if you scroll your mouse over the blue line, it tells you the individual numbers for each day, the dates there at the bottom in gray, and of course, the actual numbers listed there. Um, we also have other categories such as duration. How long did that student play on March 12th? Well, you can see right there, it's five minutes. Looks like over here on uh, August 29th, the student must have hit the escape key early to get out of the game because they only played for a minute, 29 seconds. And that's true of a few of these little sessions here. But of course, uh, duration is the length of time that student played. Um, as you probably are already aware, most of our games, there are some exceptions, but most of our games end in five minutes on beginner bronze, six minutes on intermediate silver, and seven minutes on advanced gold. And then if we come down a little bit further, bonuses uh, in the attention stamina game, bonuses occur whenever a student is doing really, really well and, and they swim over the pirate treasure chest and it opens up and a little gold coin pops out. Each one of those is a bonus. So obviously we want mo more bonuses. And once again, you scroll over a data point, it tells you the number of times, in this case, the number of bonuses a student got on July 30th. And then finally, complete. Um, this is pretty much a yes or no. You know, did they, they play for the full five minutes? Yes, then you'll see a yes. And of course, no, they, they exited out early. And of course, if you want to know how early, you can go right back up here to duration, it will tell you. So again, very, very straightforward, very user-friendly. Um, I did want to point out though, the most common use of these graphs is to look at one game at a time. And let's say I'm done looking at attention stamina, I'll click on that to unselect it and I'll select another game, let's say discriminatory processing. And now I can see the statistical information for discriminatory processing. And you'll see we have a few other categories that we didn't have in attention stamina like impulsive strikes, uh, the number of uh, incorrect strikes for red or incorrect strikes for white, and also the correct ones too. So you can see a graph of every statistical category in each game. But um, one of the things that, that you can do, now this is not used very often, but you can compare statistical graphs between two, up to two games. So right now we've clicked on discriminatory processing. Let's say I come over here to another game like time on task and click on it. Now we've got two graphs. And just like it says here, the blue line is discriminatory processing. Here's some blue ones. The orange line is time on task. And if you wanted to compare the statistical progress between two games, you certainly can. Uh, two is the maximum, though. You can only compare two at a time. Again, though, that feature is not very common because usually if we're trying to, to ascertain the mastery of a specific cognitive skill, you're just looking at that cognitive skill by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and unselect discriminatory processing. Uh, the blue line, which is the primary line, now switches to the only game that is still selected, time on task. And now we're just seeing a graph of the statistics for the time on task game. All right, so again, very user-friendly, very straightforward. Um, the next section we have here is what we call the spider graph. And uh, this, is, this is kind of a, a, a holistic representation of the top 
uh, six behaviors that a student is doing if they're doing six. Now, it could be that they're only doing three. You know, it could be they're doing 17. But the top six, if six are present, are kind of graphed here. And you can see fidgeting, the, the further away from the center we get, the more prominent that particular behavior is. So in this particular graph, you can see the most prominent behavior is easily fidgets. And then we've kind of got a we've kind of got a toss up between easily frustrated and attempts inappropriate behaviors. So those are the main three behaviors that this particular student is doing. Obviously, the one that's most prominent again is fidgets. All right. So if we're going down a little bit further, uh, we've got the correlation section now. In the previous graph section, we had the ability to graph statistics and compare statistics between up to two games. Um, in this, it's kind of the same premise, but it's reversed. Instead of comparing the uh, statistical information between two games, we're, we're comparing the uh, two statistics within the same game. So in this, by default, it goes to all games. So if you're looking at this right now, this is comparison. This is comparison, comparing, excuse me, the attention percentage in every single game from every single attempt this student has ever played with the duration. Um, and again, if you click on anything, any particular day, it's showing you the average. Like if this student played on April 8th, let's say they played uh, uh, one game of attention stamina, one game of discriminatory processing, one game of short-term memory. The average attention percentage from all three of those games played on that day, that's this number that you're seeing now. And the same is true in this case of the duration. And you can compare any two statistics you want. If we want to change duration to, let's say, impulsive strikes. Um, in, this, uh, in this particular graph, uh, the top part is going to be the attention percentage. And then over here, we've got the impulsive strikes. And the reason you're not seeing a whole lot of information here is undoubtedly because this uh, particular student, which is a fictional student, by the way, um, this particular student didn't play a whole lot of games that have impulsive strikes as a, st as a statistic. Games like discriminatory processing, visual tracking, um, those games weren't played as much as some of the, the more attention-centric games like attention stamina and time on task. So that's why the, most of these statistics are pretty much the blue line of attention. And then we do see like in this, this particular day here, now this is probably just made up, but um, You'll see here on May 20th, this student had an average of 213 and a half impulsive strikes, and they had an average attention percentage over all games they played that day of 70.5. Um, so that's all games. That's what it defaults to. But you can also compare two different statistics within a particular game. So we'll go down to discriminatory processing here. And now we're looking at the attention percentage versus the number of impulsive strikes. and what you would usually see is the higher the attention percentage, the fewer impulsive strikes, because the more they're, they're paying attention, the less likely they are to make mistakes. Now, if you just wanted to get rid of one of these statistics, you know, we can look at discriminatory processing, the attention percentage statistic only. And you could look at each individual statistics, just like we did in the in the above section. All right, so again, correlation is taking all the games or a particular game and comparing two statistics within one of those. Uh, the first section that we were talking about is uh, comparing two different games, uh, one statistic at a time. Again, though, the most common use of all of these graphs is really just to look at one game at a time because each game develops a specific cognitive skill. And we're trying to find out if that student has mastered that particular cognitive skill, regardless of how they're doing in the other games. And that's pretty much it. You know, it's uh, it, the, the most common use of this, again, is just looking at graphs of individual statistics within an individual game. If I want to find out how this student is progressing in working memory, I'll just have working memory selected. and I'll look here and say, OK, their attention percentages are very good. Look at this. 88, 91, 85. Those are great statistics. Are they playing each game to completion? Let's take a look. Uh, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. And it goes up to six minutes here. Uh, looks like we had a couple games like on May 27th or September 10th when the student exited out of the game early with the escape key. But for the most part, for the majority of these uh, attempts, they're playing for full duration. And you'll notice it's six minutes here, whereas before when they started, it's five because they were on beginner bronze here and then they graduated to uh, intermediate silver when, when the game goes a little bit longer. 
if this student continued to play till they mastered working memory intermediate silver and was advanced to working memory advanced gold, then we would see this, this duration jump up to seven minutes if they're playing each attempt for its full uh, duration. And of course you can see that where it has complete. Did they finish? Did they play for the full five minutes or the full six minutes? Some days yes, a few days no. And then finally, in this particular game, there's a, st a statistic that's uh, pretty much unique to working memory. How many different mazes did they uh, complete? And you can see that number listed here. And anytime you scroll over, once again, we can see the actual number and, of course, the date. Uh, working memory has a lot of different statistical categories. So, you know, you can click on see impulses. You can see on the number of monsters the student hit. You can see the number of times they, they used hints to help themselves out. The number of times they were delayed in making a response. Uh, the number of fuel pods that they got, which are good things. We want those. And uh, the overall score. And here again, we have a spider graph uh, like we saw earlier. But this is, since we're just selected on one game, working memory, this is just showing us the uh, attention percent, or the uh, self-distracting behaviors that were most prominent in that game. And remember, the further way out from the center, the more prominent be the behavior is. So fidgeting would definitely be the most prominent, followed by calls out, and then um, finally you've got a little bit of off task and easily frustrated here. All right, so I hope this, uh, this auditory tutorial has helped you. Uh, remember, support with Play Attention is available live at any time. You can always contact your uh, your executive function coach. Our main office line is 1-800-788-6786. So please don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything, but hopefully you found this helpful and um, good reporting. Take care. Bye-bye.